November 8th, 2018. From El Cajon, California, this is episode 167 of You Can Bet On That. Hi, everybody. Welcome to You Can Bet On That, a podcast for the recreational gambler. My name is Mark Duvall, and sitting across from me is Dr. Mike. Hello. Well, we had some very sad news this last yes. week. Um, this last Friday, Al from San Diego passed away. Very unexpected. Uh, shocking, really. Yeah, very shocking. We were actually driving to the casino when, when you found out. We just happened to be together at the time, and I just turned to you and was like, oh my gosh, Mike. Yeah, and we were like, no, that can't be. We're- I know. And, you know, Al was such a jovial kind of guy for a second. And I'm not the only one. I was looking on Twitter. People were thinking, oh, this is some kind of gag or something. Right. right. But when you read through it, it was Vegas Nerd Society who originally tweeted about it. It's like, oh, my gosh, this is really happening. Yeah. And it just, what a shame. Al was such a nice guy. The times that we talked to him, it's funny. People probably got to know him best from his calls to 500 by Midnight. He was right. a regular caller, and that's certainly the first place I had heard of him before we'd even started our podcast. Right. And then we finally met him at VIMF, I think it was 2015, a few years back. Yeah, it was back. a few years back. And it's funny because I had kind of corresponded with him but never met him before, and I'm thinking, is is this a real guy? And the first time I met him, I said, oh, Al, you really exist. <laughs> he said, oh, yeah, you do too, Mark. But just a super nice guy, very supportive of our show. Yeah, very. It's funny, Mike. You and I were talking about beforehand. Al from San Diego. Here, we live in San Diego. Right. The only place we ever saw Al was Las Vegas. The only place we <laughs> saw him in person was Las we, Vegas. We never saw him here in and, San Diego. And he lives like less than a mile from my office. Yeah, that's what you're talking to him about yeah. it once, right? At one time he's talking like, where do you live in San Diego? And I was like, well, that's right by my office. <laughs> yeah. And the, here's a funny story. He said to me, he said, you know, maybe I found my new dentist. Uh-huh. And then he said, well, I don't know. The way you play the hard ways, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he said. Oh my Something gosh. like, you know, like you're a little too loosey goosey. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, Al, I'm totally different at work. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, such a nice guy. So support. He was a big fan of Las Vegas and the right. Vegas podcasting community, Vegas nerds. Right. They were well, he te- was at everything. Oh, he I don't always think went. we ever went to an event that he wasn't at. And I, I, you know, I feel bad here because he was trying to talk us into going to not VIMF, you know, here this Just last, recently, last yeah. October. And we're thinking, oh, we can't really swing it. And, you know, we're expecting, well, we'll see you next time, Al. Yeah. Uh, he was a Padres fan. Big Padres big Padre. fan. Well, he always wore a Padres fan. hat. Mm-hmm. Every yeah. time I think I ever saw him, he was wearing a Padres hat. He was a hat. big Star Wars fan. In right. fact, I thought next time I see him, I want to talk to him about some Star Wars stuff. You know, it's never going to happen now. And it's right. just, uh, you can see how well loved he was if you just go online and you look at some of the tweets and people right. responding to yeah. this really, you know, shocking death. Dave Lifton created a GoFundMe page to raise money for an engraved paver stone at the Neon Museum in Las Vegas. You know, you can get these stones and have like a message right. printed right. on it. Within just over an hour, the goal was met. Nice. I mean, there were so many donations. That's so, good. Uh, that should be a, a fitting tribute to just a, a great guy and just a terrible loss. Right. Well, and he, he loved Vegas, so it's yes. perfect. That's mm-hmm. the perfect place to memorialize yeah. him, yeah. really. Yeah. So, Al, we're going to miss you, folks. Next time you're in Vegas, uh, raise a glass to Al. There you go. It's just some some very sad news for everybody in the community. So, All right, well, let's get on with the show. So there have been some rumblings about maybe MGM and Caesars merging. I don't think we talked about it on this show, but recently uh, Golden Nugget wanted to merge with right. Caesars. I read that in the news. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, sure. And, you know, I was like, well, I haven't heard anything about this. Just all of a sudden, Nuggets buying mm-hmm. Caesars. And Caesars said no. Right now, MGM, it, we're not close to a merger here, but apparently MGM is investigating the possibility of a merger. I would think that from a gambler's standpoint, that would be a disaster. I certainly don't want no. virtually every strip property to be under this huge MGM umbrella. Well, and, uh, you know, the thing is, though, even under the Caesars umbrella, 
every property has different rules and different, yeah, sure. you know, I mean, they're all different. It's like, well, aren't you guys owned by the same company? We ask, we ask that all the time. Yeah. yeah, we are, but it's different here. So maybe it would be different at every property. I don't know. It just seems like people are really down on Caesars and MGM both. They've gotten right. a little too big for their britches. And this would just make it worse, especially if MGM were to kind of engulf Caesars because MG, this is just my opinion, but I think MGM's policies are worse than Caesars, yeah. at least right now. I In think ge- so I'm making too. a very general statement. Here, well, as but. far as we're concerned, they <laughs> yeah. are. Yeah. I know they are. And can you imagine, too, I, here we go to Harris, Southern California, which is right. a Caesars property. If that switches to MGM, the, no guarantee here, but I bet our comps would drop like crazy. Oh, I like bet we to nothing. Get, yeah. We wouldn't even go there, probably. <laughs> we probably go too to far to drive. something closer. So. Right. Anyway, just, this is just, you know, preliminary stages. They're just investigating. So, you know what we need to do, you and I? What's, we need to make a bid. We don't have the money. But just make a bid. Just make a bid. Yeah. And say, look, let us in. We could turn your company around. Here's what we would do. Here's what here's what will get people in your door. Right. And we do all these things for the casino. And then w- having no hotel management experience, right. uh, it would be a disaster. And, no, we'll and they'd bring go in under. A, we'll bring in somebody who, <laughs> oh, okay. who knows how to run a hotel. Oh, okay. But we'll tell them how to run the casino. <laughs> all right. And they'll actually make money. No, that would be instead nice. Instead of being, the, you know, the what's they are. <laughs> That's what would be nice. Well, back on episode 143, we talked about an article that Pi Gow Tiles Jim from New York brought to our attention regarding a woman who won a car through a drawing at Viejas Casino here in San Diego County, but who received a lot of pressure from casino personnel to take a cash prize instead of the car, a significantly lower cash prize, right. much less than what the car was worth. Well, she refused. She said she wanted the car. But in the end, she didn't receive the car, but she did receive a tax form indicating that she owed taxes on the car, which was valued at about $134,000. Nice. So she ended up suing the car dealership and several employees at the casino. Under law, she couldn't sue the casino. Right, because this sovereign, it's some sovereign yeah, it's a tribal, nation. Yeah. But, yeah, but they want to tax her on a hundred thirty-four thousand dollar car. Well, the IRS does. Yeah, I mean, who has a hundred thirty-four thousand dollar car? Well, so anyway, Jim sent us a link to a follow-up article on the story, and the casino is now claiming that she wasn't eligible for the prize at all because a companion of hers played on her casino rewards card in violation of casino rules. And as a result, she improperly gained additional entries into the drawing. Oh, my so God. So this is how the casino is going. It's like they're not even admitting they did anything wrong. They're just they saying, say, well, it's a moot point because, oh, she yeah, didn't you know, She, she, didn't she qualify. can't win anyway. Right, yeah. Now, if she had taken the money, would they have said that too? Oh, no. They wouldn't have even no, investigated it they wouldn't it even any, investigate any further. it. Yeah. Hey, don't go to Viejas. <laughs> if you are within my voice, do not go to Viejas <laughs> Casino. Oh, that's, they're terrible. Well, the reason that Mike is saying this is because it's not the first story we've heard about no, this it's not. regarding car giveaways yeah, right. there. It's so a, something is going on. Yeah, they're always yeah. going to give away a car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in parentheses. Yeah. So anyway, the drama continues. I'll post a link to this new article in the show notes. God, it's just terrible. It pisses me off is okay. what it does. Yes. <laughs> and I don't, I don't even know the woman and I'm pissed off yeah, for her. Anyway. And you don't so, know all the details either. No, I'll I say right up front, Dr. I'm Mike, so but I'm still going to be pissed off. <laughs> All right. What's the IRS going to do now? Well, supp- now this I read this article and it, it you know there's a lot of stuff in it, but apparently the IRS said, "Okay, we're we're taking back this form." You know, okay, yeah, right. You didn't get the car, so we're taking back this form. But there's some bureaucratic Ballyhoo? There's, Bally there's, there's some <laughs> bureaucracy where it still shows up as her owing the money. So the IRS said, "Yeah, sorry, you don't owe us the money." Oh, but you still owe us the money. You know, it's like the left what? hand doesn't do what the right hand's doing. So oh but anyway, God. yeah, so it it's it's continues. I I have so many IRS stories. I, I wish oh, I could just go on right now and tell you IRS my own personal IRS stories. All right. Well, I thank crazy. goodness we don't have time for that. <laughs> but we there is an IRS related story coming up. My blood pressure's high enough. Right. <laughs> it's not to have another IRS All right. story. All right. Well here, here's an IRS story. You ready? <laughs> All right. Okay. We got an email from Chris. Hi guys. Chris from Tennessee again. Love the show. Keep up the good work. Love listening to you guys. But my two questions are about a cruise we are going on in January. So his first question is, if you win a jackpot, 
do you have to pay taxes on it since it's in international waters? That's a good question. That's a great question. So uh, the short answer is yes. If you're an American citizen and you win money gambling Anywhere, right? Anywhere in the world, including international waters on a ship, you've got to pay taxes yeah. on your gambling winnings. Sure, it's just like a baseball player who goes to Toronto to play a game <laughs> and gets paid money for mm-hmm. playing that game. Mm-hmm. He's working in Toronto. When he comes back to the United States, they want some tax dollars. Yes, and so do the Canadians when he's there. Well, see that you know depends, right? Yeah. You know, you're right. paying it's taxes a, twice. So it's a little is, different in that situation, yeah, yeah. but it's the same. America doesn't care where you earn your money; they want they their want the share. taxes. Now, will the cruise ship issue you a W-2G tax form on jackpots of $1,200 or more, which does happen in land-based casinos here in the United States, right? A a machine jackpot of $1,200 or more, they give you a W-2G. Some cruise ships will give you the form and some won't. We've heard varying reports. It may have to do with where the ship's port is, yeah. not where well, it's registered. No, not where it's registered, not, but no. it's, it's home port. But yes, exactly. Okay. Or if it picks you up in New York, for example, okay, right. that, that may have something to do with it. But regardless of whether or not you get the form, you do have to pay taxes on it. Oh, you're supposed to pay taxes even if you don't get the form. That's correct. All right. Okay. Yeah. That's the law. That's the law. That's what you're supposed to do. Rules That's what you are should made do to be broken. if you want to stay within the letter of the law. Okay. And we I don't are like not it. we are not tax attorneys, nah. but we would recommend staying within the letter of the law. You would recommend consult your own attorney. All right, question 2. Do they have poker tournaments in the casino, or is it all slots with no table games? This will also depend on the cruise ship. Now, many will have table games like blackjack and roulette, so they'll have those kind of table games. But poker is not very profitable for any casino. So there's a good chance there won't be poker on your cruise ship. And even Although if, the one I went on did have a poker tournament. It did have a poker tournament? Yeah, it okay. did have a poker All right. tournament. So, I it mean, was a very low buy-in. It was one of those real quick it's ones. It's probably real you know, quick, yeah, right? So it that, didn't, right. didn't take very so, long. So that's what you would get is right. if there were a tournament, even if there were a tournament, it would be short and it'd be it, a low buy-in. Low buy-in, very not, quick. Yeah. They just want to get people into the casino. Right. And, you know, you go in, you lose, you, you're out of the well, tournament and you And a typical cruise has all sorts of activities for people on board, and right. that would just be another activity, right? right? The, where exactly. The casino, yeah. Right. So, exactly. Now, the big exception to this would be cruises that explicitly cater to poker players. For example, both Card Player Magazine and Andy Up Magazine offer poker cruises where there are cash games and tournaments going on all the time. So if poker's your thing, we'd recommend looking into one of those types of cruises. But yeah. it sounds like Chris already has his cruise arranged and you know, they're going in January. So, right. but yeah, Chris, he's probably going to Mexico. It could, or you'll just, well, it depends Caribbean. on where he's, where yeah. he's, uh, where his port is. But yeah, Chris, you just have to check with the cruise line because it's really going to depend. Hey, thanks to everyone who's been clicking through our Amazon link. Remember, whenever you're going to buy something through Amazon, please go to our page first. You can bet on that.com and click through our Amazon link towards the top of the page. All right, let's move on to our voicemail hotline segment. Remember, call our hotline at 951-292-4377. That's 9512-WAGERS. 9512-WAGERS. And maybe we'll play your clip on the show. First up is Marty. Hey, guys. Love the show. Marty from Northern California. Okay, I got to ask a question. If you or anybody else on the podcast ever does this. So I have it so ingrained to never say the number seven at the table that it's now affecting me in other places. I was at a Chinese restaurant last night and I wanted to order the number seven combination plate. And I'm, my, all that's going through my head is how am I going to tell the guy this without saying the number seven? And this happens to me a lot. I'm walking around and, and it's my wife is and I are grocery shopping, and she'll go, hey, let's go down to lane number seven. And I'll say, ah, don't say that. It's weird, guys, but it's affecting everything I do. Talk to you later. Now, Mike, I think you've got the exact opposite problem. <laughs> I was just going to say, I have the exact opposite problem because we'll be at the table, and I don't care. We were What was it the other night? We were talking. It had nothing to do with craps, okay. but just the word seven came up. Yeah, we were watching some score or something. Yeah, oh, know, it's, it's, it's like ten seven. to seven. Yeah, it's like seven nothing. And Mark's like, what are you saying seven in the middle of this roll for? <laughs> what I'll usually do, here's the truth. What I'll usually do is when Mike says seven, 
I won't say anything right then. Right. I'll wait for the next roll. And then if the next roll is a seven, then I berate you like crazy. Yeah, but yeah. if it's not a seven, you don't say anything. And I don't say anything, and then you didn't even realize you said seven. <laughs> right. So I say I, it all, it's a win-win for me. I say it all the time. <laughs> I'll tell you what, as far as the menu goes, just do like me. I can't pronounce anything on a menu anyway. Uh-huh. Anywhere we go, just, I just want this one. Just point. I just point to the guy. Yeah, I'll have this one. That's good. Yeah, Very good, We'll sir. go over there to that aisle. <laughs> How would you like your eggs? <laughs> yeah. What do you say at that point? I was like, <laughs> Seven side up. I don't know. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> All right, next call. Hello, Mark and Dr. Mike. This is Big Lair from Minnesota calling about your podcast the last time in which you were talking about High Life. That brought back memories of my very first trip to Las Vegas way back in the mid-1970s when a friend of mine and myself drove nonstop from Wisconsin to Vegas in his brand-new Corvette. I received my introduction to sports gambling by watching and betting on the highlight matches that went on nightly at the old MGM, which is now Bally's. I made money the first night, and then I decided to increase my bets the second night since now I felt that I had a handle on the various players. Well... The second night, I lost my butt. As the players that won handily the first night really played unbelievably lousy the second night. A couple of guys had bet the trifecta and were actually on their knees in the middle of the aisle cheering for their guy on the last leg of their bet. Well, they lost. I never saw anybody look so dejected in Vegas. Anyway, enjoy your podcast immensely. Dr. Mike. Tell your wife that Caledonia is looking pretty good for another run at a state football championship. Thanks again, guys. And oh, say hi to Dave and Julie the next time you see them, okay? Take care. Wow, Dave and Julie knows Dave and Julie. Julie. They're San Diegan people, too. I feel so bad because Julie has like this inside line to sporting events. Right, from her boss, I think. Yeah, Yeah. and so we'll get a text from them every once in a while. Hey, Mark and Mike, you know, we're going to the game tonight. Can you join us? And all we've done is turn them down. I feel so bad because... I know, and the thing is, is we both have the same problem. We need like... Warning, like we need like a week, of, at, <laughs> a least week a, advance, at least yeah. a week, right? Because <laughs> yeah. we our lives are so packed, yeah, that there's always something. And every time it seems like they say something, it's like, oh, I gotta work that, you I know, know. I mean, I can, I there's know. stuff going on. And so, if you're listening, Dave and Julie, thanks again, we apologize. For, we appreciate and, it. And, <laughs> and yeah, I mean, I like hearing from them, just hearing from them, right? Yeah, I mean, not yeah. to get something, just you know, yeah. send me a text, yeah. meet us out at Harris. Yeah, um, it's funny, Caldonia won Friday night, okay. So they're on to the next round of playoffs. That team is just nice. unbelievable. Nice. I mean, for a little tiny town. All right. Yeah. I'll see if I can get some money down. Yeah, you should. <laughs> that's that's who we should be betting on. That's that's a sure winner. You know, the high lie at the old MGM Grand, was that there ever when we went, or is that before our Boy, time? That I, might, yep. I, I don't know. It's hard to say if, if we were there when it was My going on. My fondest memory of the MGM Grand was, and you weren't on this trip, it was a bunch of guys from work went to Vegas. There was like six guys and one gal, Margaret Archuleta. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, were, you weren't there, were you? No, no. Uh-huh. Yeah. We all went and Margaret wanted to go with us. And I'm thinking, why is this gal coming to Vegas with a bunch of guys, right? She solely wanted to go because she wanted to see the lion in front of MGM. They used to have a cage oh, uh-huh. with a real lion. Yeah. And even in, the new one had it for a while. For a too. while. Yeah, uh-huh. they did, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that was her thing. She loved lions. Oh, okay. And she wanted to see that lion so bad. And we were driving and she's like, can I go? Can I go? So she went with us and stayed in a room. I mean, we were all in our mid 20s. Sure, it was all the college age and Col- poor. College and, right, age, yeah. poor. You know, we get one room and yeah. there's Margaret in there with all these guys. <laughs> but she was the best. I yeah, mean, as she was far a trooper. as she was a trooper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I always think about that. I've even told my wife, I said, I can, I just cannot believe she wanted to go to the Vegas. The old MGM. And I get, boy, Mike, I don't even know if I ever went to the old MGM. I maybe, gosh, that's going back a ways. That's so, it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know I was there because we saw the lion. Yeah, saw the lion. And, <laughs> and then we yeah. went in. There you go. All right. Next up, our buddy Tim from The Better Life. Fellas, Tim from The Better Life here. Just walked out of Horseshoe, Baltimore, uh, where I was playing some direct bets, and they had a 3-2 to two blackjack table there. That was a $30 minimum. Never heard of uh, that. I've never seen any table game at that specific minimum. It, it was, uh, I guess it's, it's color, if you will. Like I know a lot of the minimums have consistent colors it was like a light blue hue uh on the screen it was a thirty dollar minimum admits tables that range from ten dollars to fifty dollars 
thought it was really odd for a thirty dollar minimum. I'm curious if you've ever seen that either at blackjack or really any any table game. Thanks. Yeah, never seen a thirty dollar. No, you've minimum seen table. five. You've seen ten. You've seen fifteen. Mm-hmm. You've seen twenty five. Yep. I don't think I've ever seen 20. Well, you know where they do have 20? Craig and Kyle talk about PyGow in Atlantic City oh, really? where they have $20 tables so that when they pay the commission, oh, it's, it's exactly, exactly a, dollar. a dollar. They even have $20 chips, right? You well, know, that, which you don't see right. in a lot of Which casinos. that makes sense uh, well, in that situation, but did they have that on blackjack? Well, what I'm, I'm thinking is that maybe it's something similar here, right? If you've got a $30 bet, right. then it reduces the chance of having to pay out 50 cent pieces, right? Because if it's $30 right, blackjack, right. it pays $45. It pays 45 bucks. Whereas if you had a $25 blackjack, right, you it's need... 25 plus twelve fifty. Yeah. Right. And they, right. a lot of times they'll have a 50 cent piece or sometimes quarters. Sometimes they have 50 cent chips. Yeah. But that's what I'm guessing it is it just ways. reduces the, the that's need a, for the change. No, that's good thinking. Okay. That's probably the reason. That's, that's although that doesn't stop somebody from betting $35. Sure. Well, or, that's the thing. But right. since that's the minimum, yeah. You know, you figure, well, they're Most probably not going to bet 35. It'll be 30 or 50. The, or, right, you know, the 30 right, to yeah. 50. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll fix that. Okay, <laughs> we'll take care $35 of $35 every time. <laughs> and maybe they just say, oh, sorry, we don't have 50 cent pieces here. We're going to yeah. round down. <laughs> now, Tim, call back, Tim, and let us know. Did you see any 50 cent pieces? Okay. They must have them there. If it really pays three to two, that'd be pretty crummy if they don't. Yeah, Tim, let us know. If they don't, it's a big scandal. Yeah. Right. Well, that's the thing. It's like, oh, we can't pay that $35 bet. You know, we round down. <laughs> you're going right. to lose 50 cents. That's right. All right. I'm moving over to the six to five table. <laughs> no, sir. That's worse. Wait, who's saying that? The casino? All right. It's getting out of hand here. Next call. Hello. It's Dan Short from Toronto. I just uh, left Vegas. I wanted to have make a couple of comments. I finally, after listening to dozens of your shows, played a little bit of craps, played on the pass line at 2, I played on the pass line at 12, thought I should quit, but I didn't, and we had a good time. Then I found a face-up Gao at Palazzo, which looked like a really good deal. It was $15 face-up. Two things happened that I found that were very interesting. First of all, you had an ace-high Gao, but with the Joker as the ace, and that pays 15 times, so I, it was $75 buyout. Problem was, of course, I had to explain to the dealer that it was the ace was the joker and that the buyout was triple. Let me stop the call there just real quick to maybe explain people aren't familiar with the face-up pie gal and these side bets. Right. So, again, a face-up pie gal, you get to see the dealer's hand ahead of time before you set your hand. And to compensate for that so that the house still has an edge, if the dealer has ace high, all hands are a push. Regardless of what your hand was, whether you right. would have won or Could lost, good or dealer bad has hand, it right. It, it's a push. There's a side bet that you can also make that the dealer will get ace high. So you make that bet before the hand is dealt. So if the dealer gets ace high without a joker, remember jokers can be used ace as straight. aces or in a straight, a flush, flush. or a straight flush. Right. right. So if the dealer has ace high without a joker, it pays five to one. This side bet. If the dealer has ace high with the joker. It pays 15 to 1. And if both the player and dealer have ace high, it pays 40 to 1, regardless of whether there's a joker in there at all. So Dan is saying he had to explain to the dealer first that the dealer's joker was acting as an ace in the dealer's ace high hand. Right. Because right. he couldn't, he, he didn't have another ace, so he couldn't have a pair. Right. He it, obviously it, couldn't make a straight or a flush. Right. So then it just acts as an, an ace. ace. For whatever reason, apparently this dealer didn't realize it when he looked at the hand. Well, what do you think he had? And then <laughs> he had to explain to the dealer that the payout, what, when Dan was saying it was triple, what he meant was it pays 15 to 1 because it has a joker instead, instead of 5, five to, to 1. one. So that's what Dan was saying. It, it, it pays triple would normally be. So he's having to tell the dealer this. So all right, <laughs> yeah, it was a little weird there. I'm like, what? The yeah, dealer so. didn't know he had ace high. <laughs> yeah, what was he going to say? Yeah, I mean, okay, well, uh, game's over. Yeah, Good night. I, Thank you for playing, everyone. <laughs> See you later. Secondly, they had a sucker bet for five dollars, but unlike the new five dollar sucker bet, which includes a three of a kind and the straight. This one didn't even include a flush. It actually started at a full house. So for five dollars, you got paid on the full house, four of a kind, uh, five of a kind, straight flush and row flush. So you have to be really careful paying the five dollar sucker bet because in this particular case, it was a true rip off. Thanks. And I love your show. Watch, listen to it every week and, uh, I really enjoy it. Thank you. Bye bye. 
So yeah, a side bet where it only pays on a full house or bet. I don't know yeah. what the payouts are on that. It's probably right. a high house edge, but even if it's a low house edge, yeah, how many times are you going to get a full house or better? Right, it's a very high variance because right. you, you don't hit it that often. Yeah, so, very yeah. seldom. Yeah, yeah. All right, so our next call is about MGM Springfield. There's a podcast hosted by Chris Demaro called Art in the Game that's dedicated to gambling in Springfield. So give that a listen if you're interested in MGM Springfield. And of course, Robin from Anytime Gambling, he's been making the rounds talking about MGM Springfield. But we haven't talked much about it on our show at all, really. So no. yeah, here's a call from Adam. Hey guys, this is Adam from Connecticut. Just want to call and tell you guys a little bit about uh, MGM Springfield. I haven't heard anybody call about that yet, so I just wanted to be the first. So I'm primarily a poker player. Uh, the poker room there is phenomenal. Uh, it's beautiful. The chairs are comfortable, probably the most comfortable chairs in any poker room I've ever been in. Um, the crew's fantastic. And for some reason, to me, it just seems like the players are more sociable than they are at uh, Mohegan or Foxwoods, which is where I used to play. Um, as far as craps goes, which I'm also very, uh, very big into when I'm going with a friend or a couple of friends, I like to get on the craps tables. Normally a $5 player. Um, the lowest that they have there is $10. Not the end of the world. Um, again, great crews. Um, they don't have the fire bet, um, but they do have the all tall small. And today I hit an all tall for the first time ever. So kind of funded the rest of my day. And then blackjack, eh, conditions are okay. They have continuous shufflers for everything under $25 as well as six to five and dealer hits on soft 17 for anything under $25. So if you do want the three to two with a regular shoe, um, as well as the dealers standing on soft 17, you have to pay $25 a hand. That's a little over my budget. Um, I'm a low level guy. I'm like you guys, but overall, uh, MGM definitely won me over as a customer. I've been there probably about six or seven times since it opened and I plan on continuing. I'm also a, a military veteran. I was in the Marine Corps um, and they bumped me right up to their pearl level, which I thought was great. Um, Mohegan doesn't do anything like that. And, uh, I do also enjoy the fact that the M Life Rewards points stay for a year as opposed to six months at Mohegan and Foxwoods. But that's about it. Hopefully I'll see you guys come up here sometime soon or I'll see you out in Vegas another time. Thank you. Mike, aren't you going to Massachusetts here? Well, with it, huh? yeah, sometime in March, maybe. Okay, so March. We're going to Boston. Here? Okay. And I think we looked it up, right? It's like a half hour drive from there? Or? Yeah, a little over an hour and a half. Do you think you'll be able to make yeah, the... Yeah, well... That's a little... That's a long... Kind of a long haul, isn't it? It's a it? long haul, yeah. yeah. And we won't have a car. Oh, really? Yeah, we're going to take a train from New York to Boston. you got to go, Mike. I mean, you're not. when, when are you going to have a chance otherwise? You may never get there otherwise. Oh, I have a feeling we'll get there. <laughs> okay, all otherwise. right, good. But, yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see how it all works out. I, okay. I just I can't make any guarantees on that at all this right. moment. Maybe okay. as we get closer to March, okay. I will. Right. Hey, um, I like these military deals. Yeah, and you know what's... I, I think that... Every casino should do that, mm-hmm. and thanks to Adam for his service. Well, and Tim, on the recent episode of The Better Life, he talked about it, too, because, you know, he's a veteran. Right, he was right. in the Marine Corps. Right, right. You've got to take advantage of these if they're if they're out there, because, right. uh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, you know, here in San Diego, we're... Well, we're a big military town. We're a big town, military yeah. town. Mm-hmm. My family is tons of Marines. I, mm-hmm. I wasn't, but most of my family mm-hmm. was. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah, they should all do that. Yeah. It's a good thing. It's Yeah. It's, right. Yeah. It, At I least, mean, I think out here at Hollywood, they had something where you got like a meal or something. There was some kind of mm-hmm. discount. You know, if you're in the military, you got like certain amount of money off your meal, which is great. Sure. I mean, especially here in San Diego because there's so many military yeah. people. Yeah. Well, right. you know, yeah. Like I said, bump you up a tier level or, right. you know, yeah, free buffet or something like that. So, yeah, definitely look into that. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got a Vegas trip coming up here relatively soon, right? The pretty, end of this quick. month? The end of this month. It's the week after Thanksgiving weekend? Yes. And you're going it's, to for the yeah. great gift wrap-up? Great gift wrap-up. Okay. Uh, we're going to stay. My my mom and dad are going with me, and we're going to stay at Harris. Okay. My brother's going. I don't know where he's staying. Probably Bally's because yeah. he likes Bally's. Okay. And that's actually where the gift wrap up giveaway is. Okay. For that one. Wasn't it the, some big disaster last year? No, at it was Caesars? terrible. They like well, they forgot to book the room. Oh Their God. own casino <laughs> and they forgot to book the room. Okay. And so 
they had to have it in a tent outside yeah. and it was particularly warm uh-huh, for, so, <laughs> for December. December. Yeah. So that tent was like so stuffy and yeah, hot. People yeah. are sweating. It was so uncomfortable. Right. There was no room to maneuver around. Yeah. My dad's in his scooter, you know, yeah. your mom's there in her wheelchair. That's right. And it was like, it was a disaster. Right, your mom a- and my dad ended up just parking their vehicles yeah. and talking because there was, <laughs> there was crazy nowhere to go. Trying yeah. to get yeah. them around. But it's yeah. valleys this year. So it's it sounds this like maybe year. they so, plan for. So hopefully it, it'll all work out. Good. So that's the, and this is the reason we're not going to Biloxi. With all yes. the Biloxi people. Right. Because you had to go to the great gift wrap up. <laughs> well, I'm surprised that some of the, like Eric's not going to the, he must be going to the earlier. Well, no, I don't know. He's pretty down on Caesars these days. Oh, you yeah. know, after that whole letter that right. I showed you that letter, right. they talked about it on Vegas Confessions too, right. where they basically denied this guy seven stars, yeah. even though he'd played a ton, right? And they're saying, yeah. well, here's why we're not going to give it yeah, to you. Yeah, that's ridiculous. You know, and other things too. They had that issue at Paris, right? In the, uh, with, right, with Julian's. The- <laughs> back, uh, back, back or whatever back, it was. Right. So so I don't think he's going at all, no. Although they are Although well, he probably has a lot of points. Oh, I, I probably would does. I don't yeah. he, uh, speaking of which, this weekend a bunch of folks are going to Vegas as part of the Oceans 14 5K event. So everybody who's part of this Oceans 14 group, the excuse is it's the rock and roll marathon 5K that some okay. of them are going to run in. Right. So they're going to be in Vegas this weekend. So good luck to everybody there. Anybody who is going to be there This weekend, you know, check with them. They actually have their itinerary online if you go to Oceans14XL.com, and everything's there. So good luck to everybody going there. And I guess we'll mention your trip, upcoming trip again on uh, well, we'll, the next we'll show. Have, and yeah, one we'll more We'll have at episode. least one more episode. And, of course, you're going to want to meet all, everybody uh, who might be in Vegas uh, during that same time. Yeah, weekend, so. we'll, we'll be getting there Friday afternoon and staying till Sunday. So yeah. I'll have plenty of time. Yeah. I'll have plenty of time because you won't be there. That's correct. Because and, it's never worth it for me to go. I was looking into it. The amount of points I have, right. even though I finally made seven stars this year, it's just not worth it for me to go. I'd go and get maybe i don't know a hundred dollars in gift certificates it was it was not much it, it so it wasn't a lot but yeah. you probably would get an offer another offer yeah, uh, free play offer uh, i'm sure oh, you would because yeah. i have some too now you can't use both oh like a you know, yeah but, oh i'm not going so okay anyway, all right <laughs> i can't talk you into it you're right. going to biloxi without me no that's you? come on <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Hey, we want to thank some people for some PayPal donations. First of all, Keggers, karma donation for an upcoming guys trip to Vegas filled with NFL parlays and rolling lots of hard sixes and eights. Also, this is a karma donation for an upcoming move to sunny Southern California and away from snowy and cold Minnesota. Uh, weren't you thinking about moving to Minnesota, I, Mike? Yeah, I'm going the other way. He says, hope others come to their senses like we did and move away from Minnesota where it's below freezing for half the year and there are no craps whatsoever. Dr. Mike could never live up there. Love the show. <laughs> well, I just fly to Vegas and I would avoid the, you know, $100 a gallon gas tax that California's going to impose on us. Well, no, it's already there. They I just know, didn't overturn it. Yeah, they didn't overturn. Oh, it drives me yeah, crazy. Well, it doesn't drive me crazy. And we'll yeah, talk about it. I'm the one who has to pay yeah, for hey, gas no, we to don't drive talk up politi- to here. We don't talk politics on this show. <laughs> well, it's not politics. Also, it's, it's gas to go to Also, Harris. a donation <laughs> from Eric. Hey, Mark and Dr. Mike. Here's a karma donation for our upcoming Vegas trip beginning November 8th. My wife is running the half marathon, and I'm celebrating not not vimp. Love the show. So, yeah, Eric, look up all the Ocean's 14 people that are going to be there. Yeah. Also, a donation from Brett. Las Vegas trip for the year, hoping for some hard eights. Hard eight is the best hard way, isn't it? Yeah, unless hard sixes are hitting, okay. then it's hard six. <laughs> and finally, a donation from Jay. Karma donation for my upcoming half marathon Vegas trip. There you go. Hoping for big jackpots and fast times. Thanks for the show. Jay, look up everybody again. Ocean14XL.com. Running or? Oh yeah, fast times. Maybe that's why he was saying that because yeah. of the, <laughs> of the clip at the end of the show. Right. Hey, be sure to check out our TV listing showing all the gambling related shows coming up within the next two weeks. We update those listings every Wednesday using a customized program that searches through all the raw American TV data. Just go to you can bet on that.com slash TV dash listings. We'd love to hear from you. Call our voicemail hotline at 951-292-4377. That's 9512-WAGERS. Or you can email us at youcanbetonthat at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at youcanbetonthat. 
and on Facebook at facebook.com slash you can bet on that. Finally, please go to your favorite podcast app and write a review on us. We love getting your feedback. Okay, Dr. Mike. Well, we got lots of sports going on, Mark. I know we I do. I mean, it's crazy. Well, We've college basketball college started. College basketball too, yeah. started. We got college football. Mm-hmm. We've got professional football. We've got NBA basketball. Mm-hmm. We've got hockey. Um, all right. Let, let, you need you've to, got horse racing every day. Oh, that's true. My, my phone just buzzes all day long. I'll be working. I hear buzz, buzz, buzz. And it's Mark, you know, updating me with the million. Here's how we did on the horse racing <laughs> just, yesterday. Yeah, that's kind things. of the way my text talks too, yeah, right. right? Attention, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of get that in my head when I read it. But you know, we got to do this. What's that? Bet on all these games and oh, I know, and everything I know, because I know. you know time is short. I know, I agree, right? it's short. Okay, but lately, all you've been talking about is sports. When you, when you end the show, people are getting tired of that. We want to hear something else. We want to hear Mike. You know what? You what? You parlay the other day on the craps table. You know what? Did you do? Did you play some pie gal? Did you play roulette? Did you run over and do that? You know, I don't think we mentioned on the show, but the pit boss said you can't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, one of the pit bosses. One of the pit bosses. Now That's some right. of them don't mind me doing that. In the middle this, of a craps game, going over and playing roulette. This yeah. one particular pit boss shut me down yeah <laughs> and you know what's funny is she's a very attractive lady okay and she just shut me down <laughs> that's right i'm kind of used to that in my life <laughs> so, so i wasn't that offended <laughs> that's right i understand yeah <laughs> the only one that didn't shut me down i i hung on to her okay i, I married her so <laughs> but anyway yeah, she did not want me to do that. Yeah, and you know, it's funny that it other- was so funny because there was nobody on the roulette table. Right. Right. It wasn't like I was imposing on anybody or anything, you know. Mm-hmm. I kind of understand when it's busy, like that table's full and I'm reaching over people to make Sure, bets. and then and there's a lot of chips. We talked about it before right. and it's like what chip is yours? Right. You Right. You weren't here, but yeah, there was nobody but there. There was so. nobody there and she just <laughs> like, "Oh, are you playing craps too?" <laughs> And I'm like, well, of course, I'm here every week. You see me playing grabs every week. And you're like, no, you can't do that. And she is not one of the craps pit bosses. No. Right. You know, it's, no. uh, she, so she probably doesn't know craps, but, no. uh, yeah. So see, that's really why I like, like well. Virginia, who just says, Mike, just do whatever you want. <laughs> I thought I love Virginia. She's like, just do whatever. Yeah, I'll, if it's against the rules, I'll turn a blind eye. Yeah, well, just, she doesn't go that far. Yeah, but, uh, no, don't get, we don't want to get her right. in trouble. Sorry, but let's not mention her last name. So. <laughs> but uh, yeah, most of them are pretty cool with that, but yeah. she is not. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Anything else? No. I next week I, or not next week, but next, the next episode, show. All right. I'm going to have like a barn burner at the end. Okay, get I'm ready. Gonna, I'm going to think of it like two seconds before, but it's going to be breathtaking. All right, folks, prepare yourselves. <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs> Good night. I had no idea you were so talented. The audience is going to love you.